I know you and what you, you've been doing all day, and you've probably been laughing your ass off, watching at the action here in the debt market, watching what's happening here with the dollar relative strength. It's absolutely incredible. Let's talk about that. The, the U.S. 10-year yield today, I mean, uh, I don't know. No, it just literally went into free fall. The U.S. dollar relative strength, comparative strength, I mean, also in free fall. And between these two things, the MMRI also in free fall. And where did stocks go? Whammo. Higher across the board. A rip, roaring, screaming rally. Uh, let me just ask you, because I know you, you're already very keenly aware of this. How does this happen? How does the... How do bond yields drop the way that we witnessed today, which started actually a couple of days ago? Let's go over that real quick. All right. A couple of days ago after watching global bond yields rise, okay, bonds were selling off, selling off, selling off. Bonds were, bond yields rising, rising, rising. Then, and this is going on for weeks, then a miracle. A miracle happens. <laughs> really, I'm not kidding. Uh, we, we got you know, global bond yields dropping, dropping. Someone's buying all that debt. Then yesterday, you know, kind of a stabilization a little bit. And then today I'm talking about, look, there's some some entities out here with bottomless pits for pockets buying it all, buying it all. And that's why you see bond yields drop like this. Incredible situation here. Um, and that was enough to spark a, a, a really strong rally in the stock market. You think this game is over? I don't think so. The fakery is going to continue until you just can't believe it. And I don't think we've seen anything yet sincerely. I've been saying for I don't know how many for years, I don't think the Fed is done. I think they're going to keep propping this up. They need, they need one thing to happen. Really, what it comes down to is one. What is the one thing, one, that, that central banks need to happen? They need to take this global debt hyperbubble and double it. Double it from where we are, okay? Because you see, when this whole thing gets very real, when this whole thing, which is completely not sustainable by any, by any measure, okay? And we'll talk more about that in a moment as to why. When it reaches a critical mass, a point where no matter what they do, they can't, they can't inflate that bubble anymore and it bursts, it's going to change the world and not for the good. Again, it's going to come down to a resource problem, inflation skyrocketing on, on uh, a, a, a pace or a scale that will be, I don't know, biblical, okay? Um, and people are going to scream, um, literally, for some kind of relief, which central banks are going to be more than happy to supply. But until this this event occurs, you can expect the hyperbubble in debt to expand probably twice from where it is. Not only that, reasons to be created to continue to fuel it. More war. Expanding wars. Um, new variants, another disease process, uh, some other reasons, plural, multiple, to pull cash into the now, which will allow central banks to continue to inflate. Meanwhile, you're going to have freaks like Fed President Bullard try to get you to, to focus your attention on uh, what he is telling you is a contracting money supply. Nothing can be further from the truth. People are pulling their cash out of the banks, okay? This is, there's a th three parts to this M2 calculation, people. I covered this this morning. There are three parts, okay? Um, and two parts of that, two key parts of it <laughs> are, of course, cash in bank accounts and in money markets. And people are pulling this stuff out. They can't even, they can't afford to put cash in. So the illusion is that the money, the M2 or the money supply is uh, is contracting and it's just not so. It's ballooning um, on a scale that, you know, you and I can't even probably get our heads around if we really understood it. And I think we have, you and I, honestly, I believe this in my heart of hearts. Nobody, nobody 
has a better perspective on understanding the whole twisted freak show uh, known as, as the current financial system and the central banking curse upon the world. So anyway, on the back of this this extreme rally here in, in debt, and that's what this is, when, when you see this, when you see bond yields crater like today, the 10-year yield, I mean it literally cratered, that's called a rally. That means that people are going out and they're buying that debt. They're buying, it's not people, it's one entity, one, okay? It's not any private investor. This This is central bank's buying it all. You know that. This has been my theme forever, explaining that central banks are not done. They're going to continue to buy and buy and buy until they've owned, they owned it all, until, until they solidify their position at the top of the pyramid as the, the buyers and lenders of absolute last resort. That's just the way it's going to go. The Fed is playing their game, issuing debt through this door, buying it back through another door. Issuing debt through this door, buying it back through another door. No one knows this better than you because they cover it every freaking day. What else happened today? On top of that, uh, with, with the rally here with regard to the debt market, stocks took off. U.S. dollar relative strength cratered, as I said. Gold and silver catching a very, very nice bid here. Bitcoin, crypto is doing okay. Crude didn't do too much today. That's where we stand. Now, on the back of, of, of this rally on, on Wall Street and in the bond market, obviously, a simulta- let's think about that. A simultaneous rip-roaring rally. Bond market rally, stock market rally. But what drove, what drove, let me ask you, here's a question of the day, and you better get the answer right. What drove the rally in stock market, in the stock market? Well, duh. It was the rally in the debt market. You understand? Look, this is beautiful. When you see this in real time, because there are a lot of people that don't get it or they try to downplay what I'm saying here. Oh, the MMRA doesn't work. It's bullshit. Of course, you're going to have detractors no matter what. You give somebody a million dollars, they're going to hate your guts because you didn't give them a million and one. Uh, I give people a, free, a gift. It's a gift to everyone. It's a gift to the world, honestly. I don't think there's a better risk indicator for this market, period, at the end. And I've been telling you this for the longest time, and it's free. It, it, it couldn't have, look, look what it did today. It falls off a cliff, and we see the stocks go, stock market go into a rally here. Does it mean it's over? Uh, uh, are we going to see a breakdown further of the MMRI? Well, that depends. That depends on what central banks do. If central banks continue to increase their purchases of debt, well, of course, the MMRI will drop. Okay, this is what the market wants to see. Uh, And if this happens, no matter what is actually going on on the ground, which we go to the economy, which is crumbling around us, and I'll read you something in just a moment here, just to solidify that point home as if you need that, uh, no, you do realize where we're going, but the market doesn't care. The market doesn't care if people are being pushed down to the lower rung of society, being made slaves to the system. The market doesn't care at all. All the market cares about right now is how how much further the Federal Reserve is going to pump it. And they're going to pump that debt market and that's going to spark a rally 